For the last three years, the tech world has been ruled by a single, unshakable law. If you want to do AI, you pay the NVIDIA tax. You get in line, you pay a premium, and you thank Jensen Huang for the privilege of buying his H100s and Blackwell chips. It made NVIDIA the most valuable company on earth. But here we are at the end of 2025, and that law is breaking. While everyone was watching stock tickers, a silent coup was happening inside the world's biggest data centers. Google wasn't just buying NVIDIA's chips. They were quietly building an arsenal to destroy NVIDIA's monopoly. They've gone from being NVIDIA's biggest customer to their most terrifying nightmare. We aren't talking about a minor spec bump here. We are talking about a fundamental shift in how the internet works. A battle between a Swiss army knife and a laser-guided scalpel and a difference in philosophy that could wipe out billions of dollars in market value overnight. If you think NVIDIA is invincible, you haven't seen what's running inside Google's Ironwood clusters. But to understand why the king of chips might be about to lose his crown, we first have to look at the battlefield itself. Because the war isn't being fought over speed anymore, it's being fought over something much more boring and much more profitable. To understand this rivalry, you have to realize that NVIDIA and Google aren't actually playing the same game. NVIDIA is a merchant arms dealer. Their philosophy is general purpose. They need to build a chip that works for everyone. Whether you are Mark Zuckerberg training Llama 4, a biological researcher folding proteins to cure cancer, or a teenager trying to run Cyberpunk 2077 at max settings, NVIDIA wants to sell you a GPU. And because they have to support everything, their chips are massive, hot, and incredibly complex. They are the ultimate Swiss army knife, capable of doing anything, but expensive to manufacture and expensive to run. Google, on the other hand, doesn't care about selling chips to teenagers. They care about one thing, making their own AI, Gemini, run faster and cheaper than anyone else's. This birthed the TPU, the Tensor Processing Unit. Google looked at a GPU and said, we don't need graphics cores. We don't need display engines. We don't need half of this junk. They stripped it all out, leaving only the matrix math circuits needed for deep learning. It's a specialized tool. It's not a Swiss army knife. It's a surgical scalpel. For years, this didn't matter much because NVIDIA was just so far ahead in raw power. But in 2025, the gap closed. And now, Google is doing something NVIDIA physically cannot do. They are controlling the entire stack, from the atoms in the silicon to the code in the search bar. But philosophy is cheap. Silicon is expensive. And when we look at the raw specs of the new hardware dropped this year, things start to get really uncomfortable for the NVIDIA bulls. Let's look under the hood. In the red corner, we have NVIDIA's Blackwell B200. This thing is a monster. It's actually two silicon dies mashed together acting as one chip, boasting 20 petaflops of compute power. If you want to train the smartest, biggest brain in history, this is still the chip you buy. It is raw, unadulterated horsepower. In the blue corner, we have Google's Trillium, the sixth generation TPU. On paper, if you just look at a single chip, the NVIDIA B200 looks like it crushes the TPU. It has more memory, more bandwidth, and higher peak performance. But this is where the amateur investors get it wrong. They compare one chip to one chip. But nobody buys just one AI chip. You buy 10,000 of them. Google designed the Trillium TPU to work in a pod. A TPU pod is a cluster of chips that behave like a single, massive supercomputer. Because Google stripped out all the graphics junk, their chips are smaller, use less power, and run cooler. They can pack them tighter. So while one NVIDIA chip might beat one Google chip, a warehouse full of Google chips is starting to beat a warehouse full of NVIDIA chips, especially when you look at the electricity bill. In 2025, power availability is the biggest bottleneck in AI. If Google can get the same work done for 40% less electricity, they win, period. But raw specs are only half the story. The real reason Google is terrifying NVIDIA right now has nothing to do with how fast the chips are and everything to do with how the market is changing from learning to doing. Imagine AI is like a human. First, you have to send it to school. It reads millions of books, learns calculus, and memorizes history. This is called training. Training is incredibly hard. It requires massive brute force power. This is where NVIDIA has dominated for a decade. It's why companies bought billions of dollars of H100s. But eventually, the student graduates. Now, they have to get a job. They have to answer questions, write emails, and generate images for users. This is called inference. Here is the kicker. By late 2025, the world has moved from training to inference. We aren't just building models anymore, we are using them. 
Every time you ask ChatGPT a question, that's inference. And when you are serving a billion users a day, you don't care about having the most powerful chip, you care about the cheapest chip. Using a $40,000 NVIDIA B200 to generate a simple email is like using a Ferrari to deliver a pizza. It works, but it's a terrible business model. Google's TPUs, specifically the new Trillium chips, are the Toyota Prius of this world. They are optimized for inference. They are delivering four times better performance per dollar than NVIDIA. This is why companies like Apple and Anthropic have started quietly moving some of their workloads over to Google's infrastructure. They are arbitraging the cost. They are skipping the NVIDIA tax. But Google didn't just build a cheaper chip. To make all these cheap chips work together without crashing, they had to invent a piece of technology that looks like it was stolen from an alien spacecraft. Usually, when you connect thousands of computer chips together, you use wires, copper cables, fiber optics plugged into standard switches. The problem is, when you have 50,000 chips talking to each other at once, the wires become the bottleneck. It's like trying to drain a swimming pool through a drinking straw. Google realized this years ago and built something called OCS, Optical Circuit Switching. Instead of converting light signals into electricity to route them, which takes time and heat, Google uses tiny, microscopic mirrors. These mirrors physically rotate to bounce beams of light from one TPU to another. They are literally routing data with mirrors and lasers, entirely in the optical domain. This allows Google to reconfigure their supercomputer on the fly. If a job needs a specific shape of network, the mirrors spin, and boom, the computer changes its topology. NVIDIA relies on massive, expensive InfiniBand cables to solve this. Google solves it with physics. This technology gives Google a systems advantage. It means that even if NVIDIA's individual chip is faster, Google's network is smarter. It's a hive mind versus a group of strong individuals. However, for the last 10 years, none of this hardware mattered. NVIDIA had a trump card, a magical shield that stopped anyone from leaving their ecosystem. But in 2025, that shield has finally cracked. For 15 years, NVIDIA's real product wasn't GPUs. It was software. It was CUDA. CUDA is the programming language of AI. It's proprietary to NVIDIA. If you wrote your AI code in CUDA, it would only run on NVIDIA chips. It was the ultimate vendor lock-in. Companies couldn't switch to Google or AMD even if they wanted to, because rewriting millions of lines of code would take years. But Google, playing the long game, developed a way out. They call it JAX and XLA. Think of it like this. In the old days, if you wrote a book in English, only English speakers could read it. You'd have to manually rewrite it to sell it in France. CUDA was English. XLA is a universal translator. You write your code once in high-level Python, and the XLA compiler automatically translates it to run perfectly on a GPU, a TPU, or even a CPU. It abstracts the hardware away. Suddenly, the switching cost dropped from impossible to manageable. In 2025, we are seeing major AI libraries become hardware agnostic. The prison door is open. Developers can now look at the price tag of NVIDIA versus Google and actually make a choice based on money, not code. And this leads us to the trillion dollar question. If the tech is shifting, where does the smart money go? So how does this play out for the stock market? NVIDIA is currently priced for perfection. They are the pick and shovel king. The bull case for NVIDIA is that they will remain the default choice for the Fortune 500, for sovereign nations, and for the absolute bleeding edge research that requires flexibility. If you believe AI is still in its infancy and we are going to keep building bigger and bigger models forever, NVIDIA is your play. But the risk is margin compression. As Google, Amazon, and Microsoft build their own chips, NVIDIA might have to lower their prices. They can't charge a 70% markup forever when the customer can just build it themselves. Then there's Google. Wall Street is finally waking up to the fact that Google isn't just a search engine. They are a silicon powerhouse. Analysts are starting to view Google's TPU division as a standalone business that could rival the revenue of YouTube. Google's strategy is rent, don't buy. They are becoming a merchant silicon utility. They are betting that in the long run, efficiency wins. If AI becomes a race to the bottom on price, which all technology eventually does, the company with the lowest cost structure wins. That is Google. So are we looking at a winner-take-all scenario? Not exactly. In 2025, Goliath didn't meet David. Goliath met another Goliath. We are moving into a multipolar world. NVIDIA will likely remain the king of training, the place where the smartest scientists invent the future. But Google is positioning itself to be the factory floor where that future is actually built and run. For the last decade, the question in AI was who is fastest? 
NVIDIA won that easily. But as we head into 2026, the question has changed. The question is now, who is most efficient? NVIDIA built a Ferrari. Google built a high-speed rail network. Both are impressive, both are fast, but only one of them is designed to carry the entire world at scale. The chip war isn't coming, it's already here, and for the first time in history, the outcome is anyone's guess. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for future updates. See you in the next one.